everyone. In this video, we will be talking about using a statistics software program, Intellectus Statistics, how to ask clinical questions that are answerable using the software and how to interpret the analysis. During the time, we would like to use PCOT question model, which helps us create searchable clinical questions. The PCOT stands for population, intervention, uh, comparison, outcome, and time. Okay. Conventionally, we define research agendas and problems first, but since this video is more like a primer of intellectual statistics, I will focus on how to use the statistics tool and interpret the video, I mean, interpret the results. Uh, assume you already have research topics and you have data, and yet, let's say you don't know how to use a statistical tool. If so, this tool is a very useful tool for the statistical analysis. Usually, when uh, usually we start by defining a question you want to answer. Uh, clinical problems can be quite open-ended, right? The question can have multiple answers, so PCOT helps to further define the problem using contextual information. Uh, for, um, you, you might decide to use data uh, investigate what factors are negatively impacting the patient experience. Once you've established your objective, uh, you will need to create a strategy for aggregating uh, the appropriate data. Uh, this might include quantitative data uh, or qualitative data. Okay, this is called a data collection process. But as I said earlier, we assume we already have data in order to talk about how to use this statistics tool, Intellectus Statistics. Okay, so I post one data set. Uh, if you want to follow um, just the procedure of this uh, presentation, I think it's going to be convenient. But if you have your own data set, you still can use that when you watch this video, okay? And um, if your data is not perfectly clean, and I will show one step of data manipulation using the statistics tool, also definitely I will include analysis, analytical techniques uh, that this program has. Then how to interpret the analysis result, okay? All right. So if you have a data set, just data set that you have, uh, you use that data. If you don't have, uh, please uh, download uh, Chenman data that I post uh, via email. Mm. Usable data format in this program uh, will be CSV, uh, Excel file, SPS data, CS data, data, data file. Uh, look at, let's look at the posted data, Chenman data. Uh, you will see, you will see um, one, two, uh, column, ID, age, CIS, BP means systolic blood pressure and DRBP, diastolic, BP, and cholesterol, height, weight, coronary disease. One means yes, zero means no, okay? So coronary disease, one means yes, zero means no. And each row, you see uh, about 20 cases in this screen, right? Yeah, row is cases or observations. So ID number one, 
number two, number three, number four. And in this slide, you see like 20 cases, right? So column, ID, age, uh, systolic BP, these are called variables, variables. And each row, case number one, two, three, four, this, these are observations. So when you make your own data structure, please do not place variables and cases um, oppositely, okay? So column supposed to be variable, row is cases. Okay, this is the same data set, but I pull over this data in the Excel file. So the same. ID, AG, uh, systolic BP, things like that until uh, coronary disease. So even though you see about 19 cases in this slide, you know, once you scroll it down, you will see the entire cases, like 200. So make sure your data uh, is complete uh, by scrolling it down to see the entire cases, how many cases. So that is a sample size, right? So if you scroll it down, the Excel file that I posted, you will see 200 cases. So the sample size is 200. Okay, now we're gonna post, we're gonna unload the data file in the software, uh, Intellectus Statistics software. But when I use this first link, analyze.intellectusstatistics.com, it didn't work. So, you need to find out the, the link that Mark sent to us when we had the workshop about the software. Uh, it will be uh, located in the your email or just copy and paste uh, in the second, uh, the second green color link in uh, to a new window, uh, new address window uh, and go through your FAM new credential, okay. okay. All right, okay. Once you successfully log in, this screen will be popped up and left, in the left, you see the menu, project, management, plots. Uh, once you uh, tap the each banner, like, project, management, plots, analysis, decision tree, things like that, then it will show pull down menu. It will show pull down menu. And also in the center on the top, you see the unload a data file. Yeah, click that button and then unload the Chapman data that I sent to you, that I sent to you. Okay, so once you unload, the data file here, and you will see uh, Intellectus Statistics data view like that. Oh, yeah, you see one more, uh, one more row, you, you know, underneath the row, ID, age, historic low pressure, that row, second row, underneath that, what do you see? So you see the variable properties here, right? So everything is a scale. Scale means a continuous variable. And underneath the coronary, cor coron, you see the nominal variable, right? So one was coded as yes, no is zero. So intellectual statistics shows the you know words here instead of one or zero. So it'll, it'll be more clear, right? Okay. So in this uh, intellectual statistics view, you see 32 cases, but again, once you scroll it down, you can see the entire cases, which is 200. Okay. So now what does that mean 
case number one, two, three, four, five. What is this meaning? So each case is an individual patient. So depending on what the research topic you have, what the research uh, data you have, the individual, I mean, the each case will be different. Some people have like school data, then each case will be each school. In my case, in the chairman data, individual case, I mean, each case is individual patient. So we call this case as unit of analysis, unit of analysis. So whenever people ask, what is your unit of analysis? You know, chairman data, in this case, we say individual patient. Some people, uh, like some people, organizational uh, psychologists, they might have, you know, research agenda on the comparison of each organization. In that case, their unit of analysis will be like company or like department, like that individual uh, organization will be the, the unit of analysis. So let's interpret the the case number one. So ID number one patient is, look at the age column. So this guy, oh, we don't know this is a female or a male. So anyway, this person is 44 years old. Oops. And this person, systolic blood pressure is 124. Uh, Diastolic blood pressure is 80 and cholesterol level is 254. I'm talking about the ID number one person. Height is 70, weight is 190. And coronary incident, uh, this person did not have a coronary disease before. So like this way, you can interpret each person's information, health information, okay? So each information, where information variable uh, has information, the numbers, level of numbers, you can think about, is it high or low, like this way, right? So when you see the coronary disease column, which, which level, or which answer, which response between no and yes is larger than the other? Definitely no is more than yes, right? Yeah. So even though you don't uh, do analyze data, uh, you still can see some kind of trend, but you don't know, uh, you know, precisely because you just see this data view only, just only a couple of samples. So we are not sure yet. This is just a dirty, quick and dirty method, right? So, and now data manipulation. So some people told me cholesterol or coronary disease are really uh, uh, correlated weight. So doctors mostly, uh, you know, advise us to lose your weight a little bit, something like that. But more precisely uh, speaking, the ratio of weight to height is more important, right? Because taller people tend to uh, be heavier. So if we just talk about weight only, we don't know why this weight is high or low like that. So we better compute ratio of weight to height. So whenever we use uh, the importance of weight, that concept in our health decision making, we want to use ratio of weight to height. So I'm gonna uh, use uh, intellectual statistics tool uh, to calculate ratio of weight to, to height. Okay, this is called data manipulation, right? So we're gonna make one more uh, new variable using the existing variables. 
such as weight and height. So once you click the variable calculator, so you see uh, multiplication, summation, uh, subtraction, and division like that. So you can calculate um, the ratio of weight to height using this function. And then once you successfully done that, you see one more variable is uh, created in the column, the last column, you see that. So I named that as a WT2HT, right? Weight to height, okay? So we're gonna use this variable, new variable in the model next time. All right, now, um, the plots. Actually, plots, this is eyeballing method to see the relationship between one variable and the other variable. Or just when you see one variable's data distribution, you want to make plots, okay? This is a very useful step that you uh, can include in your analysis, in your report. Sometimes people talk about numbers, a lot of numbers at the same time, and people do not know what's the conclusion. So when you show like trend, like, you know, longitudinal trend, then instead of talking a lot of numbers, blah, 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 you just simply show like, you know, line graphs, you know, line plot, or you want to show a comparison, one group and the other, then you really want to show like bar plot or a pie chart. So you can compare which one is more dominant group than the other like that. Or we, if you have like continuous variable, like for instance, you know, like midterm exam from scores uh, ranges from zero to 100 points. And you will really know, want to know the, what is the distribution of the scores. Then you will want to use a histogram, right? So typically, when you have a continuous variable like scores, then you really have to uh, want to see the histogram. If you have like nominal variable like female and male, like group, you know, characteristics, you want to uh, generate bar plot or a pie chart. And when you want to show like time trend, you want to make a line plot. Okay, so in that case, you want to, uh, why these things? keep changing. Anyway, so you want to use plot. So before you do the uh, real analysis, yes, we have to uh, include some plots as a mandatory step. I will talk about it in a minute. Okay, so now when I said about real analysis, I actually uh, talk about I mean inferential statistics, but before we do inferential statistics as a preliminary activities, preliminary step, we need to go through assumptions. So of course, intellectual statistics has assumptions step here. And once you go through uh, parametric assumption, then every uh, you know, datum, date, I mean, the, your data are satisfied to the assumptions, then you can move on the next step. If your data are not, uh, you know, met, if your data are not met the criteria, then you can't do the analysis. Okay. All right. So I'll show the assumption checking a little bit later. Okay. And the descriptive. Descriptives means descriptive statistics. So like mean, medium mode or variance, standard deviation, things like that. So basic information, basic facts about the data are called descriptives. And correlations are here, correlations are bivariate correlations. So association between one variable and the other. Yeah, it's called um, correlation. And then actual analysis, uh, real meaning of analysis here in the quantitative analysis, 
uh, is inferential statistics. And I chose some basic, uh, basic, more like basic uh, analysis than uh, more advanced analysis. So maybe after this session, I'm going to make another video about MANOVA, non parametric path modeling analysis, advanced. But here, I'm going to talk about um, details and of uh, regression first. So regression consists of um, three uh, things, simple regression, multiple regression, and uh, binary logistic regression, okay? All right, so what are the differences between TTS and OVA regression? Actually, when you run the regression analysis in the, there are kind of multiple analysis in it, you know, multiple outputs are shown after you run the regression analysis in the software, then you still can see like ANOVA table and T-test table. So, but sometimes the meanings are really different when I talk about T-test here in the first quotation. T-test, this is like groom mean difference test. So you have two, you have two, groups, then you conduct t-test to compare one group and the other group on the outcome. Okay, so uh, ANOVA is also group mean difference, but it's supposed to be more than two groups, then you use ANOVA, okay? So ANOVA is an extension of t-test because t-test is just the two group differences but ANOVA is more than two groups, okay? And regression, regression, regression is something else. So let me talk about this example, then we can um, clearly understand what I'm talking about here. Okay, you have a female patient who has uh, recently been recommended with cardiac catheterization. Oh, it's hard to read, catheterization based on an interview with a patient and given other relevant data. So here, relevant data means the cardiac risk factors like BMI, cholesterol, like that kind of thing, right? Or diabetes has or whatever, yeah. Anyway, basic information about what kind of risk factors the patient has. And also like some kind of test, stress test result, Okay, so her doctor suggested she would have a catheterization a treatment for her chest pain. I think she has, you know, she has been complaining about uh, chest pain to her, to the doctor. So eventually her doctor kind of suggested a more um, serious kind of surgery treatment here, uh, catheterization. But she is interested in medication therapies, like drug therapies. Uh, it's more kind of um, traditional, right? Because she heard about success a neighbor had with anti-hypertensive drugs to control the coronary disease. Mm. So let's think about this scenario using PICO mother. So PICO, Earlier, I said picot mud, right? There is a time, but in this scenario, there is no element indicating time. So I removed the T here anyway. Uh, let's just think about only four elements, four components of picot mother, picot mother, P I C O, population or a patient, and intervention or therapy. And C is a comparison or control, O is outcome, okay? So in this, uh, in adult patients with chest pain, oh, number one question, can you answer? Can you answer? So patient, the patient here, patient with chest pain, right? What is it? I, intervention. So doctor suggests the new intervention, 
uh, therapy, cardiac catheterization, right? And what is the control or comparison? General drug therapy, right? Medication therapy or, or outcome. What is outcome to be expected? Reduction of chest pain, right? Mm. All right. And the number two, number two. Uh, in adult patients with chest pain is being treated with cardiac catheterization more effective than talking anti-hypertensive drugs at reducing chest pain. What analytical techniques do you use in, uh, you know, in verifying this question? What do you think? So, as I told you before, we want to compare uh, some groups. You know, when we have two groups, which technique do you use? T-test, right? Yeah. So how many groups do you want to, in this scenario, uh, how many groups do you see to compare? Yeah, two groups, right? One is cardiac, with, uh, cardiac uh, catheterization group on the outcome, and the other group is medication therapy group on the outcome. So you're gonna compare the two groups, uh, numbers, right? The outcomes, right? So this is uh, number four, number two, uh, you will use a T-test, right? What about the number three? Okay, number three, yes. This question could be more specific Okay, like this person is a female, then you have more information. Some diseases are really, uh, you know, gender related, right? Some disease. In that case, gender is really important, right? And uh, if you include that information, like gender, you have multiple patients, you have multiple patients and uh, like, you know, there is an uh, intervention like, you know, cardiac catheterization group or just a traditional medication therapy group. Mm, that is the main intervention that we want to examine, but you also want to consider like gender variable or here, there are other relevant data, right? Like risk factor, like cholesterol, such as or cholesterol or what here stress test level or like if you have like race ethnicity group you know like sometimes really um specific ethnicity uh, group has very uh you know vulnerable vulnerability in some disease right so in that case you might consider that so if you have more than like uh just the intervention to compare. You want to include all of these variables. Then what do you call it? We call it, we call it regression. Yes. Especially we call it multiple regression. Yeah. When you have more than two variables to consider on the uh, reduction in chest pain, you know, you consider regression, right? What's the difference between T-test and ANOVA? Uh, ANOVA is more than, I mean, the, like for instance here, uh, you compare uh, cardiac catheterization group and a medication therapy group on the Y outcome, right? Coronary, I mean, uh, y, what is y, y outcome? Degree of chest pain, right? So you compare two groups, then T-test. But if you have like more than three groups, catheterization group and drug therapy group and some other kind of, uh, let's say injection like shot or physical uh, therapy, whatever therapy is, if you have one more uh, group, then you have three groups, right? In that case, you will use ANOVA. What about the regression? It doesn't have to be, you know, just group variable. Regression is 
you know, you will include more controlling variables like gender, race, ethnicity, or other factors like stress level or cholesterol, like those kind of controlling variables are included in the model, then you have to use regression analysis, right? Yeah. So now, are you clear with that? Those three analytical techniques, okay? Mostly, mostly, uh, you know, regression. I mean, the ANOVA is a special form of regression. You know, we don't just do conduct ANOVA only or T test. If you have observational data like this instead of laboratory experiment data, then we normally use regression because we have data collected from patients. So you have um, multiple uh, data there, then why don't we use regression? Uh, we use regression. We enjoy using regression, okay? And the result of regression embeds with t-test ANOVA uh, characteristics. So regression is uh, more often uh, used than any other uh, techniques here, okay? All right, PICO. So define the problem first and then choose analytical techniques. That is the conventional way to do research. Uh, we typically use TPICO to refine clinical question. PICO is a framework that helps one remember the key components of well-focused question. After you've chosen a general topic to research, we have to refine the topic into a clear answerable question. The PICO model walks you through the process of defining clinical questions. The four parts of PICO are patient or population, and I, intervention or therapy, and C, comparison or control, and outcome, O is outcome. So, Question. In population, does intervention as compared to comparison group result in outcome? Okay, so for instance, what is the efficacy of metformin versus rosiglitazone? on glycemic control for children with type 2 diabetes. So what is the intervention? The efficacy of metformin, so intervention is metformin. Comparison compared to rosiglitazone and what is the outcome? Glycemic control and who, what is the population? Children with type 2 diabetes. Okay, this is a simple, so it's kind of straightforward, right? All right, so there are different uh, forms of questions. So. In you know when you do research when you test your research hypothesis we want to break down uh what you're gonna test in this way first okay so before you bring your research hypothesis you want to ask you want to clarify your question in this way. Okay, what is a scientific question? Scientific question, okay, is lingual tonsils surgery effective in treating obstructive sleep amnia? Okay, so what is effective? So effectiveness sounds very vague, right? But still this is 
kind of first question that you have in your mind to do the research. Okay, so this type of question can be written in a an uh, introduction of your paper. Okay, then you want to break down what does it mean actually? What does the word effective mean? Okay, so now let's investigate this scientific question in terms of a PICO mother. Okay, so does lingual tonsil surgery? This is intervention reduce the outcome amnia amnia index hypopnea index. This is outcome compared to other uh, placebo uh, surgery. This is a comparison control. When you compare two things, you know, one is intervention, the other is comparison group, all right? So we want to have a control group so we can see our intervention is significantly reducing the outcome level. And now adult patients with severe obstructive sleep amnia, this is population. So when you apply PICO question in the scientific question, do you see the question is more visibly written, right? And now, right before you make your research hypothesis, we want to have this kind of statistic question in your mind. So what are the comparisons of the two groups? So what of the two groups on the Y outcome? It's mean. So is the mean of the lingual tonsils surgery group on the outcome? And the mean of sham surgery group on the y outcome, those two values are compare, compared, should be compared. Okay, mean. So, what is the mean? What is the mean? A type of average, right? Mean, medium, mode. Okay, so most of the time we need to define uh, our PICO into more extended uh, setting like P cups model. So in addition to four key components, P, I, C, O, we have uh, three more. Time period, T, question type, study design, methodology, S. Okay, most of people, conventionally speaking, people use P cut, P cut. So these two things are, each of them is a separate topic. Actually, this one topic is huge. So I will make another time uh, to talk about each of these two orange color thing. Okay, so P cuts mother is explained in terms of the umbrella of EBT, evidence-based practice. All right, so you wouldn't see every element P cut in the one uh, question uh, all the time. But when you try to break down each element in the question, you will see, you will identify what the uh, question is talking about clearly, okay? And uh, also we have a template for each question type. We have a full question type, diagnosis or diagnostic test, etiology and harm, and intervention or therapy and prognosis or prediction. So each of these type of question, 
we have this kind of template. So when you make uh, your research question or even when you develop your test item, you use this template, it's convenient. So, okay. So we can make each scenario depending on what question type and uh, DEIP, so question type. So I just uh, use this uh, first letter to memorize the question type. And each type of scenario or question, we can apply PCOT to clarify, identify the question precisely, okay? All right, so that is the kind of very um, simple uh, basic knowledge about PICOT model. And let's go to intellect to statistics uh, again. So see here, analysis tab under the analysis tab, first one is assumption and second one is descriptive statistics. And third one is correlation. These are mandatory elements that you need to report in a paper, right? And let me explain this one by one in order. All right, so assumption, regression assumptions. We, if your data do not uh, follow this uh, test uh, well, then, then that means uh, your data uh, are not satisfied with the regression assumption, assumption, then your regression analysis wouldn't be trustworthy. So before you run an analysis, you better check up assumptions and uh, intellectus statistics tool shows a normality test first, then using the uh, plots, you can generate histogram uh, or QQ plot, a QQ plot is shown in the analysis later, but it's included in the uh, in the you know tool regression. Uh, anyway, since this is just the you know eyeballing method, we really want to rigorously know if the normality is met in terms of statistical test. So statistical test means, you know, it'll show exact number to judge whether or not it is good or bad in terms of normality reserve, then, then it is more, you know, uh, you know, how can I say, uh, more concrete evidence uh, than just the eyeballing method. The eyeballing method is just quick and dirty, but you still need to report this, you know, histogram and QQ-plot. Okay, so statistical test, the null hypothesis for normality test is data of a study variable is normally distributed. I mean, you don't have to run this normality test every single variable, but at least you have to do it dependent variable, okay? There are two different statistical tests for normality test in the intellectus statistics tool. And most of the time, sapiro wilk test will not give a satisfied result. So KS test is more liberal and then um, the null hypothesis wouldn't be statistically significant, which means good. Normality uh, assumption uh, was not violated if it is uh, failed to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Okay, so you report, you choose uh, something that is in favor of you your your intention, you will choose that number uh, for the report. Okay, so KS test will be a uh, better. Oops. All right, homogeneity. This is um 
homoscedasticity test or equality of variance test. So uh, hard to pronounce, right? But um, no pattern. This no pattern should exist to the variance of standardized residual plotted against the fitted values. Fitted value means predicted values, residual predicted standardized residuals. So here around the zero, uh, this is a fitted value. This is a predicted standardized residual. This is just regular standardized residual. And except for this outlier, uh, it, these guys, this each dot, each each uh, data point is pretty much uh, kind of evenly spread uh, between these two uh, on the y axis, you know, between two and the minus two, evenly spread out. There's no specific pattern uh, here. So uh, this is a homogeneous, uh, equally uh, distributed. So, uh, but again, this is what? Eyeballing method, quick and early. So Levin's test is the statistical test for homogeneity test. Uh, null hypothesis is variance of dependent variable should be equal in each group. So we don't want to violate this. We don't want to reject this null hypothesis. If we uh, reject this, if our result reject this null hypothesis, that means homogeneity is violated. So our regression analysis is not trustworthy. So both of these statistical tests, we want to see the p-value is higher than 0 0.05, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we can continue to run the regression analysis. Okay, if we see the p-value in the result is smaller than 0 0.05, that means we reject the null hypothesis. What does that mean? Reject the null hypothesis. That means data of studied variable is not normally distributed and the data variance of dependent should not, is not equal in each group. So it is another violation of homogeneity. So rejecting the null hypothesis or um, having a smaller p-value than 0 0.05 is bad in the assumption checking stage, okay? And linearity assumption, okay, this is a linear regression. So XY relationship is supposed to be linear like that. Okay, this is a strong uh, relationship and this is a less strong relationship, right? Compared to this. Anyway, X here and the Y. Um, yeah, cholesterol Y here. I just want to show strong relationship using this diastolic blood pressure and the systolic blood pressure. They are the type of blood pressure, so they are supposed to be strong relationship, right? So, okay. Um, linearity assumption, this plot is not shown in the assumption section. Instead, they are shown in the correlation section because this is XY uh, relationship, XY relationship, scatter plot. This is a scatter plot. That's why it, these kind of plots are shown in the correlations section. All right. Now, mean, median, mode. So when you, when you make your histogram, you will draw this kind of curve, or you will see the histogram uh, distribution, then sometimes you, the histogram, uh, the data shape looks like symmetric like that, but in the left, in the right, you know, sometimes it's skewed. If so, in the skewed data set, the mean is not appropriate for the central tendency. Instead, median is better, but in the symmetric a distribution, 
mean, median, mood are the same. So you report just mean. Anyway, in the uh, descriptive statistics step, you will want to report mean, median, mean and median at least. Also, dispersion, di uh, dispersion uh, or variation of the data. I mean, even though I mean two different two groups have the same mean, sometimes the two groups, two classes have a totally different variation. Like this bottom um, distribution is very wide. So it's hard to focus on which group you are talking about in your class teaching, right? But if they if upper uh, distribution shows like very narrow, variation is small. If so, you can focus on this very narrowed population, narrowed group of people when you teach, right? So easier to teach. Uh, so usually we want to choose a standard deviation for variation index and the interquartile range. I talked about IQR before in the first video, right? Yeah. So depending on which types of variation uh, distribution, your class management would be different, okay? Uh, IQR range is Q3 minus Q1. This is IQR. All right, descriptive statistics, like a coronary incident, this is a categorical variable. Then you will show uh, frequency and percentage. And if you have a continuous variable like age, blood pressure, cholesterol, height, weight, you show um, mean, standard deviation, uh, like that, okay? So N is the sample size, number of sample size, 200, right? And I think standard error of mean is this. And then mean, a minimum, maximum. And then skewedness kurtosis this is about the index for the normality as well like there is a like rules of thumb so skewedness is like showing i think within two or within two everything is within two right here so these are all satisfied with the normality assumption kurtosis the threshold is three so everything is smaller than three so smaller means absolute value uh, absolute value except for this this is slightly higher than 3.0 but it's not that severely violating so we just leave it alone reliability uh, reliability also talked uh, before like define reliability is defined uh, as how consistently the test produces scores for a particular sample of student. It shows internal consistency, measure of each item to the other items on in the test. So here item means variable, variable. So KR20 was used in ExamSoft. And that was a special form of Chromba Alpha. So in the statistical tool, uh, Intellectus uh, Statistics, it uses Chromba Alpha. Like uh, if you are measuring a uh, latent factor, like burnout, empathy, clinical judgment, nursing motivation, things like that, then these are not directly observed. So we we really need to report reliability using Chroma Alpha. Okay. In this data, my data, uh, common, common data, I uses hard data, so objective data, like all, everything is almost the observed variable. Uh, but uh, let's treat. In order to calculate Chroma Alpha. Let me use this historic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. And these are the type of blood pressure. They are really, really tightly jointed, right? Supposed to be high reliability, right? Let's say like these are the uh, indicators for vascular scale. 
I will make a vascular scale like a latent vector. Then these two items, two variables I used to make a new variable, new factor, latent vector, vascular, then I have to calculate reliability. Okay, here, reliability was calculated using the two item, okay, blood pressure item, and it's a 0.83, from bar alpha was calculated, the 0.83, so threshold is, that is good. So, this is good. How about correlation? Okay, now, by variate correlation, before you conduct regression analysis, hmm, you want to report by variate correlation among all the variables in the data set, right? I mean, in the model, not the data set. <laughs> okay, so correlation is called measure of association. And there is no... Uh, such a clear outcome here. Just uh, you choose random uh, variables and then you just uh, show the how related the two variables are, okay? So in order to show the relationship between the two variables, you use scatter plot, why? Correlation coefficient, uh, just calculated based on the, you know, the, the statistics tool. But it doesn't show, it does mean the number does not mean whether or not it is linear or not. So that's why in order to see if the two variables have a linear relationship or not, you need to draw scatter plot first. And then if it is not linear, then the later computation of correlation co uh, coefficient is not very meaningful. So here, scatter plot here, and strong positive linear and strong negative linear in the center graph. And this, the last one is looks like very weak, very weak positive linear, okay, but still linear, even though it is weak, okay? When we see scatter plot, uh, we consider three elements for correlation, strength, direction, shape. Okay, everything in this slide, uh, page 28, is linear. There's no other certain shape. But in slide 29, okay, we don't say this doesn't have not any relationship. No, it's not true. It has a relationship. Like on the x-axis below, uh, at the Negative values on the x-axis, xy relationship is negative, but after the zero on the x-axis, you see xy relationship turned into a positive relationship. So this is what? Quadratic form, quadratic uh, equation rather than, rather than linear relationship, right? So this is not linear relationship, then you will have to use a different kind of analytical tool, analytical technique instead of a linear equation, okay? Regression is based on linear equation, okay? That is why we better check the scatter plot of XY relationship before you see the number correlation coefficient, okay? All right, so now once you're sure, assure the linear relationship between X and Y, then you calculate Pearson product moment correlation. So Pearson correlation R. So R is statistics correlation based on sample and the parameter, this unknown number in the population is called row. So instead of this R, so another type of here, row, 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 like that, row. That's sure, I'm not sure you can see my uh, mouse, row, okay, Greek letter. Mm. So between X and Y, correlation R, Pierce correlation R equals S, this is covariance between X and Y, divided by standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, 
covariance, a matter of dispersion between x and y. Now, intellect statistics provide this correlation output. So, age systolic low pressure relationship, age DRBP, age weight, age cholesterol, age height, age ratio of weight to height. Okay. Age systolic blood pressure is a statistically significant, so they have a relationship. They have a relationship 0.44 compared to rules of thumb. So absolute R is between 0 and 1.00. So 0.44 is a medium relationship. It's quite strong relationship. Yeah, it's quite strong relationship. And uh, p value, p value is uh, statistically significant. Once you see the p value is smaller than 0 0.05, that means statistically significant. Okay, this diaspole, diaspole blood pressure is also so as time goes by, as uh, age is higher, then blood pressure is going to higher. Okay, going to higher. Um, age, weight, 0.853. So this is not statistically significant. So, oh, this result shows uh, my common sense. I thought the weight is very important. Uh, on the, I mean, age and weight are related. That is my common sense, but Actually not based on this sample, okay? So, but age and cholesterol is highly related to uh, each other. The p-value is a statistic, shows statistically significant. Okay. All right. And systolic blood pressure weight 0 0.074. Okay. This is larger than 0 0.05. So this is not statistically significant. However, I told you before, the weight itself does not say anything because of the height. The, you know, tall people tend to have a you know, high level of weight. So we have to make this weight uh, to a ratio of weight to height. Then you see the C, uh, P value change here from 0 0.074 to 0 0.006. So now the relationship between systolic blood pressure and the ratio of weight to height is statistically significant while the pure relationship between systolic blood pressure and weight was not statistically significant. So data manipulation is important, right? Okay, regression. Now, this is what we want to say. Yeah, so this regression is a primary inferential statistics uh, technique. So regression, what is regression? One variable is clearly an outcome. We want to predict or understand. Okay, so we want to predict something based on another. Dependent variables are treated as outcome variable, but independent variables are treated as given or fixed variables. Variables that constitute the only values of interest in the study so that the levels of the variables are under the control of the researcher, like intervention or therapy. They are given under the control of the researcher. And dependent variable is called the criterion variable or outcome variable. Independent variable is called as predictor or explanatory variable. So regression line is like that, XY relationship. And regression line, um, shape of the relationship, you know, strength, direction, and shape. Do you remember that? And then 
regression is based on correlation and it's supposed to be based on linear relationship. Okay, straight line, linear means a straight line. And then, uh, you know, computer, the software, intellectual statistics estimate the best fitting line based on these 200 data points, simple, right? So this is the best fitting line. Best fitting line to predict what the values of the y variable will be for any given value of x. To make such a prediction, we obviously need to know how to create the best fitting line, which is called regression. Best fitting regression. So general linear equation is y equals b0 plus b1x and Based on the collected data xi, yi, where i starts 0 through k for the i uh, case. Now, we want to put a hat here to show this is an estimated, estimated line, one line. Estimated line, linear regression equation, OK? So this is why we have like, if you have a sample, 200 samples, you have uh, ideally 200 like that, right? Every B0, B1 is different, but you want to have a, one single best fitting line, not just 200. Then you have to put hat here, best fitting line, one single line. All right. Multiple regression. So now you have more than one X variable, then we call it multiple regression. Depending on whether or not including an interaction effect between two X variables, um, if there is no interaction, we call it ANCOVA model. If it has X1 times X2 is here, interaction effect, then this is the ATI model, aptitude treatment interaction. So this intellectual statistics shows both of them based on how you click. Like it shows, it shows like interaction, include the interaction. Then you will choose the X variable that you want to make interaction. Okay. So this is example of multiple regression. <clears throat> I did not include any interaction effect here, but I chose cholesterol as dependent variable. In the multiple regression, we really need to choose a continuous outcome variable. So I chose, I wanted to predict cholesterol level based on coronary incident, age, uh, blood pressure, and uh, ratio of weight to height. Um, there is a rule, multicollinearity. So, you know, systolic by pressure, blood pressure is really uh, deeply related to diastolic blood pressure. So you need to choose only one uh, variable here uh, because they are very deeply related. If you include both of them in the model, then multicollinearity happen and your standard error is uh, fluctuated. So we want to avoid it. Like um, when you have uh, some X variables, like you know, high education level, you know, usually uh, tend to have a good income, right? Uh, not all the time, but anyway, education and income are really uh, highly correlated. So in this, so. In that case, you want to choose one out of two for your mother, okay, to avoid multicollinearity assumption. Coronary incident, I mean, I just made it up this uh, mother to show how to use uh, intellectual statistics, but actually think about it, coronary incident is kind of outcome uh, and the cholesterol is a risk factor, right? This can be a X variable and the coronary incident is Y variable. But if you do it, coronary incident is binary 
a variable, dichotomous variable. So you cannot use multiple regression. That is why I just uh, place this here in the dependent variable and coronary incident is placed as a, in one of the independent variable. But in reality, you will want to use coronary incident as outcome variable by using a uh, predictor cholesterol. If so, we go with logistic regression. So that is why I say, depending on the question you pursue, pursue analytical technique is decided later. So topic or question should be decided first and then method decided later. And look at this. Uh, we you ignore intercept p value. You want to take care of only uh x variables p value. So which one is uh, statistically significant? Yeah. So p value is 0 0.001. So A's is statistically significant, and none of them except for the A's, none of them statistically significant. And when you report this regression analysis, you report the R square and the F test, the overall model test, P value. Yeah, this is statistically significant. So your model is good. But when we go to individual slope test to see the T test, just only one is statistically significant. Okay, you also want to report equation, regression line, equation here, just copy and paste here, okay? Now, logistic regression, uh, logistic regression violates, logistic regression actually, you know, when you have a binary outcome, this is definitely a violation include the violation of linear linearity, linear assumption. So in order not to violate the linearity assumption, we transform some values into uh, logistic, logic function like that. So this is a coronary incident, uh, probability of coronary incident having coronary incident, probability of uh, having coronal, coronary incident, P probability ma, uh, divided by one minus uh, P probability. This is a pi. Then LN is logistic, logic, logic function. Okay. So not in order not to violate any assumption violation, we transform the, the binary outcome into this logic, logic, okay? So this is O's ratio. Inside the parentheses, we call this O's ratio. So this pi is P, P probability, and then P over one minus P pi. Uh, this is O's ratio, OR, O's ratio. And then once you plug this O's ratio in the logit function, then this is called logit, logit. Okay, this is a bunch of uh, math, but instead of, you know, uh, investigating the detailed uh, processes, you know, we are just, uh, you know, use the, applicable knowledge so yeah we don't have to worry about oh i'm not good at math things like that yeah so just uh, we use uh, applied knowledge here okay all right so now instead of r square in the multiple regression logic logistic regression shows a mcfadden r square this is a pseudo r square similar with it, just regular R square. Anyway, McFadden R square. And then instead of F test for overall model test, logistic regression use chi square, chi square test. Okay. Individual slope test, 
uh, yeah, here, chi square test again. Okay, some other people call that wild test, wild test, W A L D. Yes, but anyway, it's a type of chi square test. And the logistic regression equation is this. It's just the same, the same. Um, okay, so you interpret this p value. So now, when you use the outcome variable, coronary incident, binary outcome, the whether or not the person will have um, coronary incident are is shown here based on these predictors, okay? So coronary incident having, so you age 0 0.06, it's a statistically uh, significant, right? 0 0.014. So age is, yeah, the older, the higher possible, high, highly possible you have, uh, the person has coronary incident. And what about the systolic blood pressure? It's not statistically significant, right? How about weight to height? Yeah, you better lose weight, okay? Because this is statistically significant, right? Okay, but if you happen to include just the weight only, it's not statistically significant. So that's why I manipulate weight and height to make the ratio, okay? And cholesterol, oh, surprisingly, cholesterol is not statistically significant. Yeah. Okay. So another the more, method for sampling oops. qualitative research is continuous adjustment. Or so, if you have more questions about this presentation, please email me. Also regarding the. Intellectus Statistics tool, uh, as you just listen to the voice a little bit, there's a video library and some courses, a training session. So feel free to email them. And also, of course, please feel free to email me. Thank you.